Welcome back guys, we're back again with the Minecraft tutorial. This time we're going to be downloading our Lcraft to our PC and to our server as well so we can go online and play with our friends. So you've decided that you no longer just want to break normal ordinary box, you want to break it in a lifestyle fashion, you want dragons and different animals, you want hundreds of different entities and mods all in one server. And how do you do that? Well that's by downloading RLCraft, you can either do this to your PC or your PC and server as well. We're going to be using our awesome host Seekerhost for this server. They don't only have family and friend packages but they also have large packages and really huge custom servers, enough to fit hundreds of people if that's what you're after. So let's get started and the first thing that we want to do is actually download this to our PC. This is so we can actually connect with it on single player world. You can of course just go ahead after this step and play it um, but then if you want to add it onto a server you'll have to go another step further. So to do this we're going to start off with curseforge.com. This is where we're going to download the RLCraft package. Once you select the Minecraft option you're going to see top on the list we got RLCraft over here. So let's just go ahead to the install button. So you're going to get this message if you already have the curseforge um, launcher already installed. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel so we can go ahead with the actions that you would do if you don't have it. Now I I would normally do this video showing you how to add the mods to your actual Minecraft launcher, adding the forge and stuff like that. However, this time I am going to use the new Curse Forge uh, launcher. This is what has taken over the Twitch launcher now. And for RLCraft, I do very much recommend it. This is because RLCraft has a few more folder uh, or a few more files that go into your server, but more importantly, your single player world. Now, if you don't remember them exact files, if you do want to change from RLCraft, you might mess up your Minecraft a little bit because you might forget to delete some of the files. Whereas with a new um, Curse Forge launcher, it's going to do all of that in one neat, very quick package. So by doing this, there's no need to download the Forge file 1.12.2, and all you're going to need to do is go ahead and download for your particular version, whether you're using Windows or Mac OS. And again, just in case you missed that, it's install, and then it's going to basically prompt you to do it. If you have got it already, it's going to basically ask you to open it. If you do open it, it's going to bring you to your Curse Forge app. It's going to open it up, and then you can browse mod packs, but we'll get to this in a sec. So now that you've downloaded your launcher, you will have an empty screen if you have not used it before, and you won't have RLCraft there. What you need to do is head over to browse mod packs and then you're just going to search for it. So if we go in the top search bar over here, we just put RL, press enter, it'll come up with RLCraft. Of course, here it says play for me. Of course, it will say install for you. So just go ahead, hit install, and it will just download all the mods, the forge server jar that you need to and then once it's all done you can click play on there as you can see mine is already installed it might take five to ten minutes depending because it is quite a large file and there's quite a lot of stuff to add on there however it saves you a huge time actually um, changing your server jar running that with java adding all the mods and all the other server files to your minecraft to get started with once you have completed that you can now go ahead and press play and as you can see the mod pack and everything like that is already done it's going to open up its own launcher so this is going to be separate to your normal Minecraft launcher. It's opened up the Curse Forge launcher. And as you can see, it's already got the right selection of Forge. It's got our Railcraft on there, so it's perfect. We can go ahead, press play, and now we can play with our single player worlds. Once you press play, you're going to be greeted with this screen, which is the new um, launcher menu, and it's going to load up all the mods and everything like that. You can go ahead, click a single player game, or join other Minecraft servers. So that's the hard bit over. We've got our Railcraft downloaded to our PC. We've got the launcher ready. We can just go ahead and play it when we want to. However, now comes the slightly harder part of adding it to our server. Now, I say slightly harder part, it really isn't actually that hard. Once you've done it a few times, it really comes quite quickly. And all you're going to need to do is go back um, onto your internet tab with the RL craft. So if we go ahead and search for Curse Forge, we're going to go on the Curse Forge site. I am going to leave all the links for this in the description and we can go back to Minecraft. Much like you did before, find RL craft. However, this time rather than going straight to install, we're actually going to click on the RL craft image over here and it's going to bring us to the download page. You're now going to want to navigate your way to the bottom over here to the server packs. And as you can see, it's this one. It's the 1.12 server pack that we want because that's the version it's running one. So we can now download our 1.12 12.2 pack we know that it's the same compatible version as on the curse forge launcher so we're going to go ahead and tap this download button right here to download the whole server pack it's going to bring you to this page and then just wait five seconds and once the five seconds is done it will start to download automatically right here and you're going to get the zipped file of rl craft server pack now it's all done we're just going to go ahead to our folder over here i'm going to find the downloads folder as you can see here on the downloads folder we have got our file so what i suggest is actually moving it from here so i'm just going to cut it and i'm going to move it to another file called 
called RLCraft, just so I know uh, where the actual folder is, because we're going to need to extract the files. So we're just going to go ahead and paste our RLCraft uh, zipped file in a folder called RLCraft, or anywhere really that you know where it is. You can put it on your desktop or wherever it is easiest for you to access again, just to be able to extract it. I usually like to leave it into a folder because once it is extracted, you then got all of them files in one folder and you can go ahead and delete the zip file. So you've pasted your RLCraft server pack into here. Now what you need to do to extract it is just right hand click, go to 7-zip if you have got it. If you haven't got it, it's a free download. Um, I'll leave a link for it and you can download the 7-zip um, or if not, use whatever method that you have on your PC. Um, now what we can do is we can just go ahead and click extract here. It will now extract all the files within this onto this folder. Once they're done extracting, it's going to look a little something like this. You're going to get your config, your mods, your resource pack, resources, scripts, structures, etc. And the only reason that I did mention at first that for the single player, uh, I'll use the curse forge launcher rather than actually adding it to the Minecraft is because you have to add all of these to your Minecraft as well for it to work rather than just the mods. Um, this will only lead to perhaps confusion if you then try and change the mod on your single player world or something called Minecraft. You might forget some of the folders and it might mess up. Uh, so that's the reason why I've done it. But anyway, so you've got your original zip folder of your RL craft. You don't actually need this anymore. You can go ahead and delete it because we've extracted all the files and we have them in this folder called RL craft. I'm just going to minimize this over here. We can go down and close down any curse forge um, pages because we don't actually need them anymore. And we can go ahead and open our multi craft here with Seekerhost. Let's just go ahead to the server that we want to add it on right now. Before you do anything, just make sure that you actually stop your server. Now, if it is running on a different jar from Forge 1.12.2, let's say it's on default, all you got to do is stop your server, which we're going to do now. Um, you want to clear all of your files just to save any mistakes later on or anything getting corrupted or anything like that. We're going to come down to setup. We're going to go to delete all server files and then leave that as clean mod directory and plugins. Then we're going to enter our password and press apply. Now that we've done this, uh, the next time we start up the server, that is what it will do. Delete all the old files and stuff like that, all the mods and directories. So let's go back to the main multi craft page over here. At this point, you now want to select the server jar that you need. So in this case, it's 1.12.2. So we're going to select that. You can change your world name or anything like that, and you can go ahead and hit save. Another way to delete your files manually is heading down to your FTP file access. Once you've signed in using your information, you can just go ahead and um, tick all of these, you can just tick all up here. You can go ahead and press delete that way. Or of course you can use FileZilla. If you're not sure how to use FileZilla, we have got a neat video. All of this is on the Seekerhost website and you can connect via that and delete all your files that way, or of course transfer them over. But as you can see here, we've deleted everything on this server right now. And we're gonna come back to the Seekerhost server. Now what we need to do is actually just start our server back up. It's gonna start with a clean Forge 1.12.2 um, server jar, all the correct folders. So we just need that to start back up. Once that's done, we're going to stop it again then add the files that we need but it does require you to add the server pack into the server files so we got our tick now so our forge 1.12.2 server is up uh, now it's all up and we've got all our files they've been created we can go ahead and stop the server now for this part we are going to be using filezilla because moving over files especially large files is much easier using this um, again if you're not sure how to do that we have got a neat video um, and just a quick explanation just use your ftp file access information i'm not going to pop mine up because otherwise it'll be up on the screen um, but you'll get the relevant information and then use your password to log in so if we just go over to filezilla over here um, you can use your host name then your username your password and your port which is all provided um, on your ftp file access of course the password isn't provided you know that already that's the same as your multi-craft password once you've got all that all in you can then click quick connect once you have connected you can then reconnect using this little button here it'll open up all the servers that you've added and you can quick connect to it with one button so anyway we've got our server files open we've got a brand new uh, forge server jar we've got a brand new forge 1.12.2 server files we've got the config logs and everything like that so on the left hand side we have all of our files to come over from the pack if you're not sure how to use the left hand side this is all your computer documents right here you can go from your pc i've left mine um, on a usb and then I'll, if i come down to our railcraft you're going to see all your files right here now do make sure that you have extracted these don't just try placing the zipped folder of our railcraft into it if you are going to do that i'll show you in a second how you can do it using the ftp file access but i'm going to just do this manually first so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to highlight all of these and i'm going to drag and drop them over to the server file over here now this will take a little bit longer and you're going to get a few of these messages this basically means that you have two folders that are the same so in this case it's going to be config and it's going to be mods because you already have this folder here so what we're going to do is we're going to do apply to current queue only 
And we're going to press OK because we want these new config files to replace these old ones on the right hand side. This is just the uh, folders that are created with the Forge server. So we want the RLCraft ones over here. So anything that does need to be replaced will now be replaced. Like I said before, it is quite a large file. So it's going to take a little bit to load up. And of course, you can read through these as well. You've got some options about the different shaders and another one as well called uh, for servers only. If you open that up, this is going to show us the settings that it wants us to um, run it to for the best stability but we'll do that after we've got it all installed and running so now we're just going to let this download to the server and we'll catch you again once it's all done so as we can see there we've got all the files loaded up on the server so we can go ahead and close this down if you don't want to use files the way you can do it is by going to files and then to ftp file access of course do this on a clean server again like we did previously and just go ahead to upload you can then choose the file which is the zipped folder file of course we have now deleted it but the zip folder that we extracted these ones from you can select that one you can then open it up once you've got your zipped file in here, you can simply select the zipped file. I'll just use this one as an example. And then you can come up to unzip. You'll unzip it and it'll do exactly the same thing as what we just done on FileZilla. Just make sure, of course, that it doesn't replace um, the config and the mods with two folders and it does actually overwrite them if it doesn't just delete them manually by selecting the empty folder you can check if it's empty by simply clicking on it if it hasn't got anything in it's the old empty folder you can then select it and then you can go ahead to delete however we're pretty much done now we've got all the files onto the server now before we get the server started there is one more thing that we need to do which was the little notepad that we had within the folder which is to change this over here if you would like to see why they have got an explanation for everything underneath however we're just going to go to our server properties and we're going to set it it exactly like it's asking us to here to do that you can go to your ftp file access i'm just going to add it in two screens like this so we can see on the left and the right and what we want to do is come down to the server.properties and now you can just go to the right hand side and go ahead to edit first one on the list is allow flight which they want to switch to true so if you just come down to allow flight we're going to highlight that and then we're going to type in true instead after you've done that just come down to difficulty and we're going to change this from one to three we're going to change the max tick time from sixty thousand to minus one that'll be for big structures to generate generate and whatnot last but not least we're going to change our views distance from 10 to 6 if you want to change any other properties as well you can whilst you're here because we're then going to go ahead and save it and then start the world once you're happy with everything else we're just going to go ahead and hit save here we can close this down so we don't need it just going to maximize this and we're going to come back to the server now with everything ready what we can do is we can actually go ahead and press start and everything will kick in all of our files are in the correct place and once the server is started we can then join on and play another bonus about using the curse forge launcher is that anybody else that wants to play they might want to join on your server whether it be friends or other people that it's joining on can easily join using the curse forge launcher and they don't have to go through the whole process of downloading every mod and file to their minecraft a short time later we have our tick and our server is on that means that we should now be able to join on so let's close this page down so we don't need our multicraft anymore you are done downloading files and doing all of that stuff and we're just going to go open up our curse forge launcher we are of course going to select our rl craft that we downloaded earlier for our mod packs and we're going to press play so we can join on using the launcher now it will have us in the correct forge version so we can go ahead and press play again once it's all loaded up so let's go ahead now you can close this page if you wish and it might take a little bit longer now because of course we do have to load up all the mods and everything like that once more with our aircraft unfortunately it's quite a large file so this will happen every time you open it up um, and I do apologize if the screen goes a bit jittery. I'm running a few uh, few bits at the moment. We obviously got the RL craft and the recording and everything like that. So yeah, apologies if it does go a bit jittery. But as you can see there, we're loading the mod packs one by one. So our RL craft is all opened up. We can just go ahead to multiplayer over here and then go to add server. I'm just gonna put RL craft there and then of course the server address. So with that all filled in, let's go ahead, click done and we should now be able to connect to our server. There we go, it's all popped up. We've got the green tick, which means we've got all the correct mods and we can go ahead, click it and and join server again i do apologize for any bugginess when i play this spawned into darkness um i'm trying to i think i'm drowning well if you've played our railcraft before you certainly know that we are on our railcraft just by that so uh, let's see where we are there we go we've landed and we are in our railcraft everything's loading up nicely thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next minecraft tutorial bye bye